Here is a brief introduction to the design of pile caps. Sometimes if the soil is not very good or if you have really, really high axial loads delivered to a column, it is necessary to have piles deep into the ground to support the loads that the column is applying to the foundation. Uh, in order to apply those column loads uh, eventually to the piles, you have to have this intermediate item which is called the pile cap. It's a cap, basically, that sits on top of these piles that you see here. And these piles are these long uh, column-like uh, concrete things that are driven into the ground until they are um, uh, meeting soil that is providing sufficient resistance for the loads that they are to take. If you were to look at a plan view, you would see this column cap and you would see these four piles, uh, these dashed outlines of the piles hidden down below underneath the pile cap. Now in this particular example, I have done a pile cap that is uh, w wide and w tall. In other words, it's just a square pile cap. But in real life, there's nothing that says that it has to be a square pile cap. Certainly could be rectangular. It can be other shapes. Uh, for instance, with bridges, they are often uh, different shapes than that. Furthermore, I just throw, show four piles here, but clearly you could have a different pattern for the piles that are arranged underneath the pile cap. In this particular example, I have shown a column that is square, and so these two dimensions are called C sub 1, each of these uh, physical dimensions here. I also have a capital D representing the diameter of a typical pile, and um, we also can look at this uh, pile cap in a side view uh, or an elevation view and you can see that those piles are going to be actually sort of embedded into the bottom of the pile cap and so often what happens is these piles are driven into the ground and then the soil is uh, already excavated here and then they pour this pile cap and it just encases the top of those piles and by doing that this uh, column here can deliver its loads through the pile cap into the piles. I also have some um, basic uh, estimates or uh, suggestions for these distances and sizes of dimensions here that are some minimums. Now certainly that pile cap can be very very thick. Sometimes they're four feet thick. Sometimes they may even be thicker than four feet. They might be five or six feet thick. Maybe even more depending on the size of the forces that are being transferred from the column to the piles. And uh, so this is a very important thing. Now not only does this transfer vertical loads, but if horizontal shear loads were being delivered, delivered from the column to the pile cap, those loads could then also be delivered into the top of those piles. And so this um, embedment of the pile into the pile cap is uh, a way that, that shear transfer can happen down into the soil. Now in some other pictures I'll show you later we sometimes have reinforcement in fact we probably always do have reinforcement from the pile coming up out into the pile cap so that when this concrete is poured it actually ties the pile cap to the pile so that if the column actually went into tension these piles that are driven down into the ground would actually prevent the upward or the uplift forces that are being applied to the column. So all of those things can take place uh, with a column, pile cap, and pile system.
vertical downward loads, upward loads, shear loads. All of those things can happen. In fact, uh, in some of these subsequent pictures, we're probably going to see that. Here we can see there's a point load basically from the column. This is a very simple depiction of what a pile cap is having to resist. And certainly, by this simple uh, force diagram here, we could construct a shear and moment diagram for this pile cap. Of course, this is for the, this very simple example that I am providing where we have a pile cap sitting on just four piles. It would certainly be more complicated if we had uh, many piles and the pattern of the pile arrangement was more complicated. And this pile, because it is going to have to resist shear and moment, it would be designed similar to a reinforced concrete beam. Now, it is true that uh, there are some other ways to design piles. Uh, there is a theory that uses uh, a truss and tie type uh, theory, um, but I'm not going to get into that just now. And uh, suffice it to say, with some of the basic information uh, design methods that you know for designing reinforced concrete beams, you could probably get a pretty decent pile cap designed by that method. Now, one of the things that you need to check if you're going to design a pile cap is punching shear at a typical pile. So you can imagine that as this column is, is being pushed down by the building loads, this pile cap is sitting on these piles. And if that pile cap is not thick enough, this pile might punch right through the concrete pile cap. And so this little graphic here is trying to depict that happening. That is possible if it were too thin. And so certainly we need to check that this depth of the pile cap is sufficient. And uh, so for a single pile cap, we could calculate its total shear force uh, trying to punch through, and that would be piece of U from the column divided by the number of piles. And that would give us the uh, shear force or the total axial force in one pile then uh, we can uh, look here and see this uh, plan view of a pile and then this outline here this dashed outline is trying to sort of depict the average um, failure surface that would be trying to punch through this concrete pile cap and so we would want to calculate this circumference here, and that is B0. And that is actually called uh, the circular shear perimeter in this case. We call that B0, and that will be pi times this total diameter from the top of this dashed circle to the bottom. So that's going to be the diameter of the pile plus d over 2 on each side, and that total is d plus little d. That times pi gives us our perimeter b0. If we multiply that times the depth d, little d here, we are going to get a cylindrical area that this pile uh, creates as in terms of a failure surface. That then gives us our total shear area, A sub V U, and that's B0 times D. And then we are in a position to calculate the nominal factored shear resistance to punching shear. And so we have here phi Vn is equal to phi times 4 times the square root of F sub C prime times B0 times D. And that phi Vn needs to be greater than this V sub U value that was being applied to a single pile. 
And uh, if that uh, relationship is satisfied, then we have a safe design against punching shear failure. Now, one also has to be careful as far as how close this pile gets to the edge of the pile cap. Because if it gets too close, we're not going to have a complete circumference here uh, for our failure surface. It might be just a half circle or maybe even a quarter circle if it's too close to the corner of the pile cap. And so those are some other things that a person has to consider. Now, if we were going to uh, do a pile cap design, we would also want to check for punching shear of the column itself. The column is trying to punch down through the column cap. And assuming that there are no piles underneath uh, in this uh, immediate region near the column, uh, we could uh, ignore the, the piles uh, if they're outside of this zone. And we would be able to calculate a shear perimeter or a shear failure surface for the column trying to punch through the pile cap also. And that would be important for us to do. Now it is true that sometimes the piles are right underneath here and they help reduce the amount of force that is actually having to be resisted by the failure surface. But uh, to keep things simple, we'll assume that uh, none of those piles are helping in this particular case. And so for our column that is C1 by C1 uh, in size, we are going to have now this square uh, perimeter and that square perimeter is going to be equal to B0 and it's equal to C1 plus D times 4. There's four sides to this failure surface and that failure surface happens over this depth D and that gives us our shear area B0 times D and, and these concepts are very similar to what we saw previously when we were talking about the punching shear for a pile cap. Now in this case uh, VU is going to be equal to P sub U, the, the total column force. Now um, as I said, if there were some piles under here, this might actually get reduced. But to keep it simple, we're just going to say VU, uh, the total force trying to punch through this failure surface, is equal to the column factored axial force. Uh, now having B0 and also uh, finding AVU using B0 times D, we then have a pile cap resistance to punching shear for the column. It actually turns out there are these four formulas here that a person would have to check. And you certainly can find those in the ACI code and look at that for the details. But suffice it to say that oftentimes this last formula is the one that governs. And for this case, we would have a fee factor of 0.75, and we would be able to calculate phi Vn according to this formula, and check to see if it is greater than or equal to V sub U, and it has to be in order for us to have a safe design. Now, another thing that we would need to check for a pile cap is to check that it has sufficient direct shear capacity. It could be that these two piles over here as they push up together create a failure surface right through the cross section of the pile cap and you can kind of see this jagged crack um, that I have created in our picture here for the pile cap indicating a failure surface. And in this case, uh, VU would be equal to half of the total column load would be going over here, and so half would be pushing up here. And so in this case, VU is P sub U over 2. Our shear area would be the width of the pile cap times D, so that would be W times D. And our shear resistance of the pile cap to direct shear is 0.75 
um, governed by this formula here. Phi Vn is equal to phi times 2 times the square root of f sub c prime times w times d. And uh, this is the formula for direct shear through a beam uh, when the concrete resistance is being calculated. And so that's what we're doing here for the pile cap since this is acting somewhat like a beam at that location. And lastly, of course, we want phi Vn to be greater than or equal to this V sub U that we're calculating for this failure mode that we are checking. One of the things that an engineer has to do is check all of the different ways that something could fail. And that's exactly what we're going through with this pile cap design. We had to design it for bending. We had to design it for shear. We've had to check for punching shear of, the, of an individual pile. And now we've also, uh, well, we also checked the punching shear of the column. And now we've also looked at the idea of uh, direct shear failure. And of all of those, we must always have uh, satisfied our ultimate strength design equation. Now, here are a few other comments about pile caps. Uh, and I mentioned this previously. Uh, if we have to uh, resist uh, moments, we need to have reinforcement in this pile cap as necessary for those moments. So we might have steel at the bottom. We might, might also have steel at the top. We certainly can design for that as needed. Uh, secondly, we want to connect the piles to the pile cap to resist uplift. So if the column has a tensile upwards force on it, we're going to have some hooks coming up from the pile and hooking into that pile cap. There would also, of course, have to be some hooks coming down from the column and being embedded in the column pile cap as well. As I mentioned, uh, pile caps tend to be quite thick, and of course it depends on the loading. A pile cap is a 3D thick element transferring the column load to a number of piles spaced out in some sort of grid. Sometimes a computer analysis is used to analyze the forces the pile cap must resist. Uh, for the example that I've shown here, it would probably be fairly easy to do all the calculations by hand, but for more complicated piles, uh, it, there may be a need to use a more sophisticated computer program. In fact, sometimes people may even use a finite element analysis, but that is beyond the scope of this present uh, discussion or introduction for pile caps. Here are some example loadings that uh, a pile cap must be designed for. The axial force, the moment, and the shear. It may have some or all of these. And this is the case when we have a downward axial force. Uh, this uh, picture down here at the bottom is basically the same. The only difference is that in this case we have an uplift force instead of a downward column force. So hopefully this little introduction to pile caps is helpful to you and gives you a little bit of an idea about how to design pile caps.